Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out my second episode of Ixie Picks, where I just share my favorite songs with you and what I like about them. And this episode, I'm going to share with you three tracks that I love that have an amazing build, and then one bonus track. And it's not an accident that all of these tracks are at least nine minutes long. The first track I want to share with you is called Burnt by Chiasmos. They're a Faroese and Icelandic duo, Olaf Arnolds and Janus Rasmussen. And this is an instrumental. It is so cool. And all of the tracks on this album are past tense verbs. Lit, held, looped, swayed, thrown, dragged, bent, and burnt. I'd actually hazard to say this is one of my favorite tracks in the entire universe. And it is such a powerful experience listening to it every single time. First of all, I love the groove of this song. It's got both up-tempo and half-time elements. So there's this incredible conflict all the time between tempos, essentially. The hi-hats are up-tempo and the claps are half-time. And by the way, there are two different types of claps that alternate, such a great production choice. And then the kick is like, it's so primal and pulsating the entire time. After this initial build, there's this breakdown, and then that starts the big, big build. And it starts with piano. Minor chords have this inherent heaviness and fragility to them, I think. And this whole song makes me think of like ice slowly growing over something and like overtaking it. And I think part of that has to do with the icy, cold sound of these minor chords, F sharp minor and C sharp minor. The star of this build, I think, is the bass. It's just so delicious. And I think it's probably the use of filters, various filters, that has that bass line sort of start very small and kind of contained, and then it grows into something you could never imagine. And I also think one of the things about it that works so well is that it has these deep dives down. <laughs> I think they are tenths or something. Mm. All the way to... Even here, it's even bigger, I think. It goes, nah. like that. It's huge. And the top note is the third of the chord, which is minor. So it's like exposing the like bleeding heart of the chord. 
to the very top. And then down, down below is the root of the chord, the bottom of the chord. So just very satisfying. It's a great way to voice uh, notes in chords, spread them out like that. A great rhythm too. Da, 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 da. Very syncopated. The phrasing of the song also is a part of the build and what kind of sets it apart. So what I mean by phrasing is usually songs, no matter what time signature they're in, whether it's one, two, three, four, which is four, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three, three, four, or six, eight, one, and a, two, and a, one, and a, two, and a, et cetera, et cetera. Usually there are four or eight or maybe 16 of them before a musical statement concludes and then you repeat that. But in this case, there's five measures or five bars in the musical phrase. So that there's like one extra. So that automatically makes the cadence of the song rhythmically sort of lopsided. And I think whenever you have that kind of lopsided cadence, it sort of feels like it's tumbling forwards all the time. It has momentum behind it. One. Two. Three, four, five, one, and you start over again. Sometimes when things don't change for a while in music, sometimes when things don't change for a while in music, it can result in lack of interest. But if it's done right, I think it does the opposite. I think it leads to excitement because you're starting to expect a change, like surely there must be a change coming. So this one chord and this bass line, it's just dum, 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 dum. It, it starts to increase the anticipation. So there are pads like this and probably synth strings and sampled strings that contribute to the build. They get louder and louder and there's more dissonance in between, like when it does this. Like this one. That creates tension and excitement. So those get louder and louder as the build gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What I love about builds like this is you just really don't know how many times this will repeat before there's relief. So not knowing that, I think also adds to the excitement, but also the like timelessness, how you can get really lost in a song like this. It's very hypnotic, right? But then when it does finally break, it breaks into this kind of piano and pad solo where it feels like you either have fallen from the edge of a cliff and landed in like water or clouds or electricity or something and you're being held and cradled. At least this is how I feel. It's very like calm and still. It could also be like death but there's some sort of level of acceptance to this moment. So it feels like you're being taken care of after what you just went through in this song.
the next track I'm going to talk about, I'm so excited to tell you about. I've been dying to probably for years now. And this is Collider by John Hopkins. In case you don't know John, well, I'm excited for you for one, but he's an English musician. He started out uh, learning piano classically, switched to electronic music. I think he did keyboards for Imogen Heap for a bit. And he scored the 2010 film Monsters. And I think he won an award for that score. It's so, so good. Very inspiring. Collider is also an instrumental. It's from his 2013 LP Immunity. And I was looking at the artwork and realizing all the connections between the artwork and maybe the meaning of of the LP and the, the song titles. And apparently this artwork was created by a biochemist who turned into an artist. I'll put a link down below if you want to read more about it, but it sounds like it's food dyed crystallization, like microscopic crystallization. So when I listened to this song, before I knew that, I really thought of this as like a song moving through space. It felt galactic, like I was traveling, you know, like beyond the limits of my capacity through outer space. But now I'm like, maybe it's inner space. It's cool to think about this because when you're listening to minimal music like this, your scope has to change. You have to zoom in to the details to appreciate what's going on. What do I love about this song? Oh man. Once again, I love the drums. Drums are so, so important. And these drums and often other elements of his music in general remind me of what fungus and moss making electronic music would sound like. Something very biological and organic about the way that his production elements are modulated and how they evolve when things kind of come in and out in really sort of random, unpredictable ways. And the way, you know, he doesn't just start a new element like on the downbeat, usually. He does sometimes, but often they kind of grow, like things kind of grow into existence in his music. And even just the quality of, of his drum sounds, like they've been, they're kind of fuzzy and highly textured and distorted in a way that makes me think of moss. I don't know how else to put it. This drum groove has a four on the floor kick, but it feels like it's rushing the entire time. I think it's because the snare hit is like kind of a little early or a little late. It kind of depends on how you think about it, but it's sort of in between the lines of the grid and it, it makes it feel like it's always a little ahead and like you're just... So that in and of itself creates a, a build. There's some really cool vocal samples, vocal chops. There's an exhale, and that just like pings the nervous system, right? It makes you, it's, it's relatable to our biology. So that's just the beginning, and you start to hear like this shimmery note come in. That's like just a little premonition of what's coming, because it gets really lush and beautiful. It almost reminds me a little bit of Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. It has this deeply emotional, uh, drawn out cinematic uh, lushness to it. The bass doesn't move from that note for a long time. I haven't timed it, but I'm gonna guess four minutes maybe, five minutes even. And it's like this tether for everything else. And it keeps us feeling, at least me, feeling sort of stuck. I love the way there's this like cyclical, never ending, almost wave-like motion that the melody and kind of this other line are doing together. There's sort of this uh, rise up and sinking back down feeling. And it's partly because of the actual notes themselves, like the relationships to each other. So 
Initially, when it goes up, it's going to go up this scale called Lydian, which is a very bright, light, upward pointing, kind of curious, almost disconnected sounding scale. It's used a lot in scores that are describing outer space. And then minor on the way down, which is very heavy. So there's just this like, again, very biological cycle going on. like this melody is reaching up it's like trying to escape like break through some sort of ceiling and it just can't do it and this this disappointment happens so many times Finally, the bass moves and it's like everything, all the pieces finally fall into place. It is one of the most incredible feelings ever. <laughs> Also of note is the way that that lead is swelling and it's on the off beats, which makes me think that there's probably a side chain compressor on the kick. So basically when the kick hits, then the volume of that uh, signal goes down. Another thing that makes it sound so biological and organic, because that kind of swell I think is, um, it's kind of like an inhale and an exhale. I hope you will listen to the whole album because it's really, really great. But on to my final track for this episode, which is How Do You Sleep by LCD Sound System. So this is going to be a little bit different than the others. It has vocals and it has like a disco groove and it's, it's a very different kind of song. LCD Sound System is an American group. They have a lot of really talented members. I've had the pleasure of seeing them live. It was a really fun show. Also, I had the pleasure of seeing John Hopkins live and that was a very cool dance party. How Do You Sleep is my favorite track from the album, and I remember listening to this nonstop on a road trip back home. I was sick, and I was alone, and I went through Glenwood Canyon on I-70 in Colorado, which if you've driven it, you know how beautiful that is. 
listening to this song on repeat. The intro is really interesting. It takes a little bit to get into. There's like this tom with a really significant delay on it and very pingy and very strange sounding and a beautiful synth kind of atmosphere and hits and it's very evocative. And then James Murphy standing on the shore facing east. Yeah, standing on the shore facing east. I don't hear you. I don't hear you anymore. I can't see you. I can't see you anymore. Things like that. So it's like analogy of the ocean separating these friends. And then this fat, fat, juicy mono synth. I think it's a square wave mostly. Just comes in and dominates. It just like. So first it's these three notes. I know it doesn't sound anything like it. I didn't have time to, but so D, C. And these are the roots of chords that we're gonna hear later on when things are building. So D minor, C major, and G major. And these three chords cycle with equal duration, which means the phrase is in three or six, basically. So one, two, three, four, two, two. And it starts over again. So that's another one of those lopsided phrases that propels things forward. When he starts singing, there's more for you, there's more for you, there's more for you, this bass, basically this bass line starts to get more complex and they add a lot of higher notes. Every time they add these extra notes to that figure, it's different. Every single time. There's not a single measure that repeats in, the, in that synth line. I just think that is so cool and pretty rare. Oh, I love this part. Part of the song that gets me the most, though, is when he starts to sing, and if I see you, it's like nothing is wrong. If we meet again tomorrow, like nothing went wrong. But there I go, erasing our chances just by asking, how do you sleep? And when he sings, there I go, he goes really high, higher than he ever has before. And he leaves you on this sort of melodic cliffhanger. And it feels so right. And Speaking of right, when he says wrong, just like nothing went wrong, this wrong note like just swells in. So let me play you what I'm talking about. So the cliffhanger I'm talking about is when he goes, there I go. So he goes, mm, but there I go. And why this feels like a cliffhanger is because he's almost to the octave, which would be, that's like the end, like.
but he just leaves you here. Go. Missing our chances despite our skin. I just get I just realized that my keyboard wasn't recording what I was doing. So let me just do it for you really quick again. So I was going. And then I start playing. Something like that. So that's how do you sleep. And oh, and the ending. The ending is really cool too. Might as well show you that. It's like a little out of tune. I love that. And the bonus track is Lateralis by Tool. I mean, I just have to. I do have an hour-long analysis, like a live analysis of that track if you want to hear more about what I think about it and how I think it works so well. But the build I'm talking about is that last section that makes you go, Argh! you know the one. <laughs> I think the reason this is so satisfying is because the bass line, which is incredible, Incredible, that big plunging down, right? Amazing. Gets doubled up like a couple times with another instrument or a synth, just like, you know, there's like level one and then like level two and then level three. And I think the drums also get kind of wetter. And even this sort of polyrhythm of the dun, 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 dun. That sort of unevenness, I think, also kind of creates momentum. But let's just listen to a little bit of it together and go, Arr. for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, many, many thanks to my amazing patrons for supporting this channel. If you want to check it out, link is in the description. We do listening parties and other cool stuff. I always feel so awkward telling you about this, <laughs> but I need to do it. And if you have some tracks that have amazing builds, please share them with the rest of the class. I'll put a comment down below that you can add them to, and we can all mooch off of that list together because builds. Until next time.